Well, we've got some of the plates up there, and some of the histories of the women that she set the table for. So yeah, it's all uteruses. It's all. <laughs> That's funny. Do you know who Farmer George is? No. Farmer George Bothwell? Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, Farmer George Bothwell uh, was written up the day that this was released on Friday the 13th. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. I was superstitious, you know, but um, this was on one side and had Farmer George on the other side, yeah. and uh, you know, it's a little shock, a little yeah. Illuminati symbolism there, just to make you think that uh, George is like somehow anti, anti-feminism or something oh. like that, because yeah, he hit his he hit his wife in the face of the book, but but. Uh, Sixty-one ninety-five. It says I'm not allowed in there with my camera, so I'm just gonna go in right now. With my camera. Sacagawea, huh? Sacagawea. And she made for them a sign to see. I wasn't very happy with Helen Thomas when she apologized for saying what she initially said and after losing her job as well. I'm unhappy with Oliver Stone and others who apologize for telling the truth, which one should never apologize for. You might apologize for your delivery of the truth. The truth is a combustible agent and can have a severe chemical reaction when it comes into contact with untruth, so a certain amount of delicacy might be called for if you want to transmit the truth without alienating the person receiving it. I say may because if telling the truth makes you feel like you have to dance around like it was some kind of embarrassment for you, or you feel the need to shade the truth to accommodate the feelings of the people who don't want to hear the truth, then maybe you should be in another business that works harmonically with the same old, same old and you can get yourself a job with Zaya Ogre International as an auxiliary butt boy, utility, all-purpose hack, or decorative lawn ornament. I am now very happy with Helen Thomas, and I hope her recent behavior becomes a contagion. It may look like she has destroyed her legacy and trashed her reputation in her final years, but the fact is, she has put an imprimatur of divine courage and integrity upon the totality of her time here, as opposed to those who possess neither and scream the loudest. She has revealed herself to be more than she was in a profession that never allows you to actually do your job because you have to cater to the synagogue of Satan, which owns the media 
because it owns the banks. They'd print the money out of thin air, which allowed them to buy everything they wanted to buy while denying the right to anyone else besides a number of the Zaya Oga tribe. If Jesus Christ was the flesh embodiment of truth, his greatest enemies were the Pharisees, who were diametrically opposite to everything he stood for. 2,000 years later, the same truth is under fire from the descendants of the same psychopathic reptile crew. In fact, it is Christianity along with Islam that the synagogue of Satan wants to destroy because the legacy is a testimony of everything they've been up to since they got here. Well, I don't understand why they should be so hot and bothered about Christianity. The outer form of it has been destroying itself for a long time and it is the biggest materialism-based supporter of the Zaya Oga, Palestinian genociding, forced organ relocation, Gentile juicing, all in one shop till you drop into your grave, Halva Nagila monster, non-pork eating due to cannibalism prescription against consuming your fellows, except in the marketplace, band of organized creeps on the planet, Fundi Christianity is the full-time fluffer of the Porno King Empire, relentless anathema of everything it stands for. Some hypocrisy is so grand and extreme that it ought to be bronze like baby shoes and iconized on all of the cathedrals and institutions where fellatio rhymes with Horatio. Helen Thomas told the truth and the pig weasel Abe Foxman proved it. Helen said, I can call a president of the United States anything in the book, but I can't touch Israel, which is Jewish-only roads in the West Bank. No American would tolerate that, white-only roads. We are owned by the propagandists against the Arabs. There's no question about that. Congress, the White House, Wall Street and Hollywood are owned by the Zionists. No question in my opinion, they put their money where their mouth is. We're being pushed into a wrong direction in every way. Abe Foxman and the Huns of Hell demonstrated that what she said is true. If they don't control everything that the truth tells us that they do control, how is it that they can shut down anyone and anything they don't like any time they want to? You can't argue with that. Well. You can argue the same way 4.5 million can reduce to 1.5 million. And if six were nine, you still get six, courtesy of Jimi Hendrix. Helen was good enough to point out that she's a Semite, failing to mention that her detractors are not, which doesn't stop the ADL, APAC, and all the rest of the slandermeisters from swinging the slur like a machete in the hands of a Filipino mucker at everyone in reach. School kids should burn effigies of Theodore Herzl every Halloween as a tribute to one of the scariest and most demented kitty eating